pedestal and a long axis view. Aim towards the third to the fifth intercostal space. And your marker should be pointing towards the right shoulder. Okay, so starting with a long axis view. As we can see over here, the left atrium, the left ventricle, and the LBOT, aortic valve, and the ascending aorta. You're going to try to move it a little bit until you get the view that you want, which shows the three chambers. This chamber over here is the RV. We can see the RVOT part of it. For the short axis view, wherever you are, just rotate the probe. 90 degrees clockwise and the pointer should be towards the left shoulder. If you move 90 degrees clockwise from the same position you will reach the short axis view. You might have to move it a little bit to get to your uh, uh, image in the middle. And this is what I call the donut and the moon view because you can see the donut and the moon hugging the donut. The donut is basically the left ventricle, the moon is the right ventricle. When you see something flickering in the middle, this is the mitral valve. If you tilt your probe a little bit towards his left side, you'll be able to see the base of the heart and you'll be able to see this Mercedes-Benz symbol, which is the aortic valve. If you tilt your probe towards the right shoulder, you'll be able to see the apical part in the short axis view. For the apical four chamber view, get your pointer towards the left side and just below the left side of the chest. And you might have to do a couple of motion technique. Now going to the apical four chamber view, you should be able to see four chambers, the left ventricle, the right ventricle, left atrium, right atrium. And how did I know that? Basically I look at my pointer and my pointer is towards the left side of uh, the patient's body and the pointer corresponds to here. So this is left and this is right. Whatever ventricle is here is the left and the other ventricle will be the right. For the subcostal view, your pointer will be towards the left side and you have to feel the sternum until the end of the xiphoid process. And whenever you're ready to see the IVC, you rotate it clockwise or anti-clockwise, give it a tilt and then you'll have to move in this direction. The IVC is here and if you tilt it towards the other direction you'll see the aorta. And then going to the subcostal view you'll have to find the end of the sternum, xiphoid process, and then your pointer towards the left side of the body. You'll be able to see the four chambers in here. It's very similar to the apical, but instead you're looking from uh, another place. This is where your ultrasound probe is. So the closest ventricle to the probe is the right ventricle. Then this would be the left ventricle. This is the right atrium. And then you have the left atrium. This is the easiest view to get in slim and thin patients. But if your patient has abdominal obesity, it might be really difficult. Some patients you'll need to tilt your probe around to find their heart, especially if um, um, they have COPD or if they have an enlarged heart. From the same view you have over here, you rotate your probe 90 degrees clockwise or anticlockwise. I like to do it anticlockwise. And once you rotate it, Try to let the heart some kind of in your view and just tilt your probe towards the right or the left. 
if you tilt it towards the left side of the patient's body, you'll be able to see this chamber, which is the right atrium. And then there's a vessel going into it, which is the IVC. And this is uh, one of the important views we use in ICU to figure out if the patient has good uh, volume or not. If you tilt the probe towards the right side of the patient, you'll be able to see another vessel but this vessel is not going into a chamber, so this is the descending aorta.